Okay. Hi guys, I'm Eunice, um, also known as Eunice Kim Hair on Instagram. And today I have my model, Amber, with me. Um, and I'm gonna be showing you basically the way that I foil my mohawk section, giving you like a really versatile, um, whether it's a money piece you want or baby lights or some anything like that. And it gives you, um, I can show you here, a super nice blend. We actually used no root stretch on her. Um, and we used Blonde Me with 20 vol. So whether your client, the reason why I love this technique so much is whether your client wants a thick money piece, no money piece at all, a rootier look, a not so rooty look, you can kind of do it all. Um, so I'm kind of going to be showing you just the mohawk section because that's pretty much what I do on all my clients um, for my foliages. Amber here, she actually didn't want too thick of a money piece um, because we have these little face framing pieces. So, But if I pull her hair back, you can see it is lighter over there, if you can see that. Um, and then we didn't keep her too, too rooty, but rooty enough so that the grow out is nice and soft. And again, I used my Blonde Me um, with 20 volume, and then I actually toned using more Vibrance, 663 and 819. Um, so I'm gonna be showing you how to do this foiling on the mannequin. Um, also, if you leave comments and questions, you'll be entered to win 100 dollars worth of Schwarzkopf Professional Blonde Me products, which is pretty sweet. Um, okay, so here's my mannequin. I have her sectioned off. So I go from hair, from her hairline, everyone has different hairlines, and usually the reason why she's kind of cut off is she has kind of a wide forehead, but also um, the way if you ever saw my work on Instagram, she, I usually use a lot of dimension and depth, so I always cut off a little bit slice of that and then I don't color that if I'm making sense. I'm, I'm kind of a visual learner and visual explainer so if I'm not making sense you can ask me to explain. Um, but So here I have 30 grams of Blonde Me poured out already and then I'm actually just going to be using 7 bowl. And so Blondie, the reason why I love it so much is it has a bond enforcing bond enforcer in it. So you don't need any B3, any Olaplex in it. And also, I mix mine one to two ratio. Some people like theirs thicker, some people like theirs thinner. I like it perfectly at one to two. Hi Eunice, this is John with Behind the Chair and you already have a question. Uh, would you use Blonde Me to balayage? So, actually, I use the, it depends on my client. So, if they are a level six or darker, I'll use the Blonde Me up to nine levels of lift. Um, and I don't have a problem with the texture. I um, I think I've made kind of like run your lightener work when it comes to ha actually hand painting. When it comes to my clients that are a level seven and up, I'll use the clay blonde me which I actually really like um, it's a little thicker of a texture and sometimes if I don't want that thick of a texture I'll actually use half clay and half regular blonde me but yes I do I use blonde me for all of my balayages all of my foliages all of my bleach outs okay move this out of the way okay so let's get right into it I think because on Amber she didn't have as heavy as a money piece, I'm going to show you guys how to actually get a money piece. And let's pretend this is a money piece who wants to be a bit rootier um, everywhere else so that she has enough depth and the girl is soft. I can kind of show you guys how to do that. <clears throat> so the reason is also, so the reason is, the reason why this is so versatile is, again, because I'm a bit of a visual learner and explainer, I kind of have to get kind of go through it piece by piece, but I don't do any um, weaving when it comes to my mohawk section. And the reason being is I take thin enough sections. And if you take thin enough sections, there's no 
planning that needs to be done because the hair lays this way. So if you're taking thin enough sections and you take and you're slicing and not just weaving, it's gonna look good no matter where you part the hair. But again, if they want more of a natural, softer look, weaving is also an option. Okay, so let's say this mannequin wants a thicker money piece. The key is the tiniest slices. I don't reach stretch a lot of my clients, to be honest. And again, the key to that is very, very, very thin slicing. Okay, so let's pretend she didn't want such a strong, prominent money piece. What I actually do is I take my slice and then I tease a little bit. And just because you tease doesn't mean that you're not going to have a money piece. It's just going to kind of give you a little bit more of a blend. And then if you foil right there, you push the hair up, and then you apply your lightener. Um, but again, she doesn't want it to be blended. She wants a strong mini piece. So we're gonna do this. Before you kind of go into your foiling, you kind of want to play around with placement and see exactly how thick and how thin you want your money piece. And sometimes I'll show my clients, I'll, you know, pull out the piece, lay out their hair again and be like, is this too thick? Is this too thin? And also looking at photographs of inspo will help a lot. So yes, this is John again. Valerie wants to know, do you use 20 volume the entire process? Um, so my mohawk section, I'll, it depends on how fine the hair is or how coarse the hair is. The actual mohawk section on all my clients, usually the volume will stay the same um, because it only takes me about five to 10 minutes to apply for the mohawk section. But actually during my foliage application, I'll start with a lower developer in the back and then gradually go higher. So I'll do seven to 15 to 20 to sometimes 23 25 depending on how dark and coarse the hair is um that way i don't have to while i'm foiling foiling takes me about an hour and 15 total um to complete their whole head that way i don't have to kind of constantly go back and forth and check if the hair is okay or not okay i'm gonna go in with another slice no teasing she really wants that money piece to stand out. Also, what's great about the mohawk sectioning is depending on where their part is, you can kind of move your mohawk around. So if they're always at, always parting on the side, make sure that you your mohawk section is thick enough so that it's not just colored on one side of the part and the other side isn't um, colored. But most of my clients do a middle part um, or I transition them to a middle part because I just love it too much. So all the mohawk sectioning stays in the middle. Okay. So kind of have this funny piece blend into the rest of her hair. I did two um, slices back to back, no dropouts, but this time I am gonna drop out hair the tiniest sliver, um, again, the key to this, working on all of your clients, is having the thinnest sections um, and not having anything too thick. So we have some dropout, and then we're gonna take this other slice, no teasing again. But again, if they wanted it a little more blended, you can tease. It's not the look we're going for today, though, with this mannequin. Also, another reason why I like the one to two ratio is a lot of my clients um, are Asian, so they have really dark hair. 
And the one to two ratio is just thick enough to where it helps the hair stick to the foil, but it's thin enough to where I know I'm saturating everything and it doesn't take me five minutes saturating one foil. Lisa wants to know, uh, what comb are you using? What brand of comb? This is my YS Park. I couldn't tell you the number. I've had it for like forever. But my foiling comb, honestly, I kind of just use anything I can find. Sometimes I'll go to Cosmoprof and buy like the $3 ones. Sometimes I'll use my YSL ones. But when it comes to teasing also, I know a lot of people use like the teasing combs. I used to, um, but I don't mind using these to tease because I find that some people when they tease, they try to tease like from up here and that's about it. I tease from down here because again, working with light and depth, I like a lot of darkness in my hair because it makes the lightness pop. So this section, I'm gonna actually go ahead and tease out my very, very thin dropout section. Okay, Jeremiah is asking, what's the best way to prevent slipping foils? Tension? Yes, tension and locking the foil in. So because usually the mohawk section, well, most of my clients have layers, the hair is a little shorter. So I don't ever need the longest foil. So just to be safe, I fold my foil a few inches down. And then you just have to really lock the hair in. Um, make sure you're pulling, but don't pull your hair completely down because if you do that, sometimes the foil starts slipping. Um, more so like just pulling outwards. And then as you kind of creep up there, any lightener, any lightener that I've ever used does expand just a little bit. So I don't go straight up to the foil or to the edge or you will get bleeding. Um, but also folding the foils up and unlocking them kind of make sure that the foils don't slip. And if they do, Afterwards, you'll kind of see when I flip all the foils back over and I'll double make sure that none of them are slipping. And if they are, I'll kind of replace them or even put um, cotton to, in between to them bleeding. So just like that, if you make sure that you're locking it from where the hair is and not leaving it too long, if I'm making sense, or wide, it's going to keep the foil in place. Felicia asks, would you use Olaplex if the ends were blonde? Um, it depends on how, well, one, no, I don't, I rarely use Olaplex to be honest. Actually, I never, that's a lie, I never use it. Um, because Blonde Me has a blonde, blonde enforcer, but if the hair was blonde, it depends on how, what our, I guess, end goal is. If they want to be blonder, let's say it's a dirty level eight and it's not blonde enough. I'll go in with a lower developer and tap that. Um, so hold on, I'm teasing again, but now that the money piece, I feel like I'm happy with how thick I'm making the money piece. I'm going to start the top and key to this is you go a little lower with the lightener each foil. So you don't ever want to go down here one foil and then back up again the next. You kind of want to just gradually go a little lower and lower and that's going to create the nice gradual depth, if I'm making sense. But back to your Olaplex question. No, I don't use Olaplex. Um, uh, but if the hair is light enough, then obviously you just kind of leave it out and you don't lighten it. Uh, okay, uh, Danielle is asking, are you weaving to get your pieces? No, I don't weave. Um, I only slice, and again, if you slice thin enough, you're not going to need to weave. Um, also, another thing I want to point out uh, is when my clients have a level seven or higher, you can take the lightener and kind of feather it up like that, if that makes you comfortable. But with my Asian clients, specifically level six or darker, I have this really sharp cutoff edge. And most people, I think if you do that, they're like, Oh my God, it's not going to blend. It's going to look thin. If your section's thin enough and your hair is not falling this way and it's falling this way, you're going to have a nice blend regardless. Like on my model that I showed you earlier, and I can show you again at the end, I didn't use a root stretch on her. You can weave. Um, it's just going to give you a, 
a lot softer of an effect. Awesome. Carla asks, uh, what's your favorite bleaching products for dark hair? Short scalp on me. <laughs> I have a lot of clients asking me if I use B3 or Olaplex or whatever, and I'm pretty honest with them. I don't. I don't use it. I've never had an issue with blondie where I felt like it wasn't protecting the hair enough. And as long as you're not going crazy with the developer or leaving it in for too long, there's no need really. So you saw in my previous foil, I kind of brought the foil up maybe half an inch away from the roots, and now I'm doing about an inch. Again, you can mess with this, and that's what makes this so versatile. You can always, if they wanted a baby light look, you can tape that lightener up all the way in every single foil, and it's soft. It's still a soft grow up because you're teasing. Or if they wanted a super rooty look, you don't have to just leave an inch. You could leave two inches out, and it would still look pretty good. I think this goes for you know every hair color, every hairstyle it's just as long as you have the end goal in mind and you are be, being very strategic with your placement there's no need to not play around with where you're putting the liner or your placement if it makes sense sorry we're just making the laptop a little higher so you guys can see But again, I want to emphasize like how thin of a slice I'm taking. Um, it's almost as thin as like, I don't know if you guys have seen like Liz Haven use, do her little, um, what are they called? Her like little strand lights. It's almost as thin as those. So again, that's for a blended look. I know um, chunky highlights are coming back for some. You can make it thicker and not do a root stretch, and that's you know complete up to you and your client. Again, what makes us so versatile? So Karen is asking, how long is too long for the bleach to stay on the hair? Um, I'm pretty sure that the recommended factory instructions, I think, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's 45 to 55 minutes. Um, but I don't use heat with Blondie. I don't feel the need to. Um, the heat from the head is enough. And my clients are usually sitting 30 to 45 minutes. It's never any longer. And even with just 30 minutes, no heat, I can get my level two Asian client hair to like a really nice level eight or nine. Randy asks, are the sections left out as thin as the sections in the foil? Um, for this mannequin, yes, but they don't have to be again. So if your client wanted something really natural and they still wanted a lot of their natural hair or a lot of darkness in between, you can make your dropout section a little thicker. It's just the hair in the foil that needs to be thin for a blended look and, you're, and if you're not trying to reach stretch. But your dropout can be thicker if you want. It's completely up to you and your client. Sometimes even what's nice about this sectioning, sometimes I'll have the dropout be super thin in the beginning towards her face, and then they'll get a little thicker as I go back. And that helps with keeping it lighter in the front, darker in the back. I think it's all about just strategically thinking about placement, color, light and dark, what your client wants, etc. So uh, Casey from Australia asks, do you do this same technique when applying a root color or is this purely just foiling? Um, what do you mean by root color? Like when you're covering grace or? Uh, well, I'll, I'll ask the second part of the question. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll ask the entire question as written. 
do you do the same technique when applying a root color or is this purely just foiling and how if so would you do that when applying a base color in between i see um yeah i would still do the same thing to be honest most of my clients don't get root colors um a lot of them well one if they come in asking for it I really talk to them and if it's, if their grays are that important to cover to them, then I'll go ahead and after I foil, I color in between. Um, but most of my clients, after talking to them, they just want their grays blended and doing so if you do, so if you're doing baby lights and you kind of um, place a liner high enough, it kind of blends out your grays for you. And most of my clients basically don't get their roots colored. And I also explained to them, you know, even though it is professional dye and it's, you know, you're coming to the salon to do it, any sort of hair color, permanent hair color on your root covering your gray is going to, to a certain extent, kind of make it harder to lift the next time they come around and they want to bring the lightness up or whatever. But yeah, if you are covering grays, you go in afterwards and cover in between. Michelle asks, uh, I always find my top foil slightly golder than the under foils. Any tips to avoid this? Your top foils golder? Correct. Okay. So that's, um, actually a really good question. Um, and I know what you mean because down here it's getting a lot of heat from their forehead because they start sweating with all the foils in their face. So afterwards, actually, I flip all these foils over, making sure um, I'm not pulling any of the foils because you don't want to pull any of the foils out on accident. And that way, the newest foils get the most heat, and you give this foil a break from the forehead heat. Danielle asks, what do you do when you have resistant hair to your color? As if it doesn't lift as well as you want. Uh, as long as I know that I had a thorough consultation with my client, I always say, I don't know how your hair is going to lift if it's my first time coloring your hair. So this is our goal. But if we don't get there, we're going to have to talk about other options. And I know as long as my saturation was on point, and I know for a fact Blondie is doing its job, um, and they don't get light enough, then my clients are usually pretty understanding about being a little darker than their end goal and waiting for the next time to lift their hair. I think when it comes to your hair not lifting enough, I've never had trouble with blonde me as long as my sections were small enough. Um. Stephanie wants to know, do you do 30 to 45 minutes after the last foil? Yep. And if I am nervous, and if the hair is a little finer and I am nervous that the back is processing a little faster, I'll just check on it after my last foil. But usually, because I'm starting so low in the back with 7 vol or 15, I'm not too worried about the hair back there falling off. And again, my total application is an hour to an hour 15. So ideally, that's not very long. Um, if you do take a little longer, you know, you can have your assistant or yourself, you know, just pause and check on the back ones and pull them out and just wipe them off with a towel. I'm so jealous one of you guys can um, win $100 worth of Blondie products. 
Speaking of, Christy asks, what volume do you typically use with the Blonde Me on Asian clients looking for a level 10? Looking for a level 10. Um, if the hair is healthy and it's virgin, usually Asian hair is really strong. So it can um, kind of take a while. Obviously, I'm not putting 40 volume on their hair. I usually start probably with 15 in the back and then I make my way to 20 and then 23 and then sometimes I'll end with 25. I don't go higher than 25. I don't think I ever need to. And as long as your hair section is fine enough, it'll get there. You just have to be patient. So Sumaira is asking, what techniques are you using? Um, what techniques? I guess it's a combination of slicing, teasing, not really feathering, because again, I said, unless they're at a level seven and above, I don't feather that liner up. But the how versus how this is again you can kind of just use a whole bunch of different techniques you can weave you can slice you can feather you don't have to feather as much if you take a look at my page on instagram I know for a fact if it's a foliage, baby light, anything in that kind of realm, I 100% did this sectioning and this, um, yeah, sectioning, because you can just get so many different looks out of it. It just depends on what they want and how you go about it. Gita asks, uh, because the hair is fragile in the front, would it be better to start with low volume in the front and go higher in the back since the hair is stronger? Um, you could. I'm not saying that, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to kind of go about it. I keep my developer the same because I know that this only takes me about five to 10 minutes to apply the Mohawk section. And once I flip the hair, I know that this is gonna start cooling down a bit and this is going to heat up and everything's kind of going to even out. Um, if your hair is very, very fine and they're already like a lot, like a natural level eight or seven, sure, go ahead. But most of my clients again are Asian. And so they're going to have um, thicker, coarser hair that needs time. And it would take way too long if I used a level or developer seven when the rest is already processing. Might make any sense. Okay, so that's pretty much my last section um, because all of this, let's play pretend, is already foiled with the foliage. And that is a different technique for a different day. <laughs> but, so after I kind of foil everything, I kind of go through, make sure everything's neat and not falling out, and I'm gentle, and I flip all this over. So again, if I showed you the inside of one of these, like I had mentioned, I don't feather it. I kind of keep a harsh line, but because my sectioning is so teeny tiny, my slicing, there's not ever really a need for a uh, root stretch. So again, I'm gonna show you my model that I literally just did this technique on, and she has no root stretch and it's perfectly blended. Sometimes this will happen a little bit with a little lightener, just on the very, very first foil. I just wipe it off and no one says anything. <laughs> yeah, okay. So one last look at the Mohawk section. Oh, and we got another question really quickly. What brand of foils are you using? From R. I um, have used a whole bunch and I just like from R just because they're a little thicker um, and they have a nice grip on them. Let's see, these are the, actually the 
from our embossed medium. So they're the long foils. So after I kind of do, I foil all of her head, I'll throw a towel on top and then I let the natural body heat cook her hair. I don't put her under heat, like ever. Okay, so showing you again, my model's hair. She um, actually lifted to a level nine, but she wanted like an ashy brown. So I toned her with more Vibrance 663 and 819. And then, can we scoot up a little bit? I'm gonna try to kind of go near the light a little bit more. Head down for me. This is with no root stretch, like at all. Oh, I'm like not even in the center of your head. <laughs> like over here. But yeah, it just kind of blends out naturally. And my clients love this because the grow out's so easy and they don't have to come back often. And then let's say one day, she does middle part. Let's say one day she wanted to kind of switch up her part. I called her hair, so it's going to be a little hard. Because we did that mohawk section, she still has color kind of everywhere, and it's going to look good anywhere she parts. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if anyone has um, mentioned pricing at all, um, but this specific sectioning that I just did really saves me and my clients a lot of time in the chair because I'll probably do a full foliage maybe once or twice a year and then in between and my full foliage is to be honest most of my clients are paying between 450 to 550 which is a good amount of money um, but every six to eight weeks I'll come back and we'll do either a partial or a face framing foil which is the sectioning um, with a little bit more like around the hairline just so it's not too dark. Can you see the color? Okay, that might be a little better. But yeah, and so something like this, I would price starting 250 and then every extra bowl of lightener that I use, I use an extra 30 because we used extra product, so you have to charge for it. <laughs> okay. I can kind of go through some of the questions and answer if you guys want. Are you able to read them from there or? Yeah, yeah, I okay. hear comments. So on the grow out, do you just do the same technique using the same slices? Yeah, I do the same technique. Um, if they want to go a little lighter, that's when it gets a little tricky because if they want to go a little lighter, then we have to do a full because if you just do the mohawk section and you go lighter on that, especially if they have layers, the back of their head, I'm gonna have to turn around. It's gonna be darker, you know, like down here and I don't love that look. But if they're like, oh, I love the color that we did last time, let's just bring it up. Then I do the same exact sectioning, same technique, and I will hit what needs to be hit. Um, if obviously the ends are light enough, then I don't hit that again. Does she have any highlights prior to the service? This is actually my sister. So we've been doing foliages on her. Sometimes we'll go darker, sometimes we'll go lighter. This time around she wanted a Ashy Burnett. So, but yeah, so even Blonde Me, because of the bond enforcing agent or whatever, I'm not worried that I'm gonna ruin her hair because clearly it's super healthy, super shiny. Four thirty-two. I used um, the toner. I used six six three and eight one nine from More Vibrance, equal parts. Six six three. Actually, I'm gonna give you guys one of my little secrets. If your hair is lifted to level nine, six six three alone, it won't drop all the way to level six, and it's like the prettiest ashy brunette. Like sometimes I'll use that alone. All right. I think you answered just about every question. Perfect. And you got a lot of love from people quite literally all over the world, from England Yay. to Canada to Africa to the Middle East, everywhere. Oh my God, that's insane. I literally thought only like 10 people would be on here. No, indeed. No, indeed. You crushed it. Is there anything you'd like to add or is there anything else you want to share? Um, I think that's pretty much 
all that I was thinking. Um, but if you guys ever want to do the technique and tag me, I would love to see it on Instagram. It's Eunice Kim Hair. Um, it's pretty cool seeing other people using what I do. Even my assistant, when she does it, I um, makes me happy. Yeah, awesome. you have to tag me. Awesome, Eunice. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You're welcome. It was fun hanging out with you guys. Hopefully, we'll get to do this again. Oh, my God. Okay. Bye.